Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Roll call. Mr. Levingston, he's not able to be here. Mr. Knapp? Here. Mr. Declaw? Mr. Declaw? I don't think he's here. Mr. Mr. Lennon? Here. Ms. Cimaroli? Here. Mr. Tolmer? Here. And myself. Okay, excellent. First order of business, and Joe, keep me honest here on the parliamentary proceedings. This is, I think, only the second time I've done it, so make sure I do everything according to, to plan. Um, the October minutes were submitted as part of the materials for the meeting. Presumably everybody from the commission has had a chance to review those. I would take any comments, uh, edits requested. If none, I'd take a motion to approve as submitted. So I moved. Okay, I second it. Second, Justine, thank you. New business, Joe referred to it already, the Morgan Heights uh, lot line relocation. Plans were submitted, I think, to everybody on the commission. Uh, I'll open it up for any questions, discussion. Um, sounds like we've got the representative here on the phone. Um, it looks like, is it a fair summary to suggest that the line is, is being uh, move just to pick up and designate parking spots as belonging to one parcel as opposed to the other at this point. Is that the, the overall intent of the request? Yes, sir. Okay. The so, only question I have is, um, sorry, Justine, go ahead. No, are you adding, uh, are you adding more parking or are you just realigning? We're just realigning that everything there is existing. Okay, perfect. All right. Only question I had is it references that Parking lots one through five, I think, are sticking with lot one, and I simply don't see one and two on the the plan submitted. I, I might just be looking past it. If anybody uh, else, and I think it was hard to see uh, what he's, what he's uh, speaking of is directly behind uh, three sixty two Washington Avenue. That would be the house. Yeah, there's going to be there's three spaces there, yep. and the other two spaces he's considering are the two car garage. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, I see it there now. <laughs> yep. God knows I looked long enough and figured I'd just ask here. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the Planning Commission? No. Nothing. And I'm taking from the, the letter that was submitted from the engineer, um, Joe, from our side. Everything is being requested in alignment with... Uh, The constraints of the borough and looks good from an engineer perspective, correct? Correct. Okay. If no other questions from the commission, I take a motion to put it forward to council as recommending to approve. Mm -hmm. My motion to accept. A second. Okay. Justine and Mike Tolmer, thank you. Can let uh, our representative get back to the football game unless you're planning on hanging out with us. I appreciate you dialing in. I'm done. Thank you very much. I okay. appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. All right. Have a great night. Bye. You too. Thanks. Okay. Old business. Let's talk chickens. I got to grab this yeah. paper. Give me one second. All right. So I think it was two meetings ago at this point that we had a number of thoughts that were presented and routed back through Joe to um, the solicitor to draft up a uh, potential ordinance. We were provided that pretty exhaustive. I hope the commission had a chance to look through all that stuff. Um, I have a couple of questions, but I'm, I'm happy to yield and see what other questions or comments there might be out there on it. I do have questions. Yeah, please go ahead. And can I, can I just go through the what uh, Tom sent to us, because yeah. my first my first question is why are we calling them household pets? I mean, does anybody else foresee that that could be a potential problem? I mean, you know, you don't want to put a leash on your chicken and walk it down the street or take it into the grocery store or have it to be a pet relief. And take it on the airplane. So, 
that I do have a problem with calling it a pet. A fowl or a chicken is fine, but not a pet. And it might be an emotional, uh, what do you call them now? <laughs> yes, <laughs> emotional support. Uh, support and, chicken. <laughs> yeah, the term. I think if you read that certain animals prohibited section, uh, I think it's covered on uh, animal normally kept on a farm for okay. or so. I think it's a, a workaround for that language. Truthfully, I, that, yeah, I was reading yes. it the same as some sort of classification uh, that would allow it to not be considered farm animals, right? Could we at least attempt to find something that's a little bit non-emotional? Huh. What's the uh, what's the ultimate concern there, Justine? Oh, it's just that it could people, somebody could take it too far, basically, and say that you know there's no way I'm getting rid of my chickens because they're family pet. That's all. So where do you draw the line between a chicken and a parrot? <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you start going down a road. Okay, I just wanted to voice it, that's all. No, that's fair. All right. I think it's well, probably the, worth, you know, directing a question to Tom if we're going to move forward with this to ask him about that. You know, my suspicion is that, you know, that there's something somewhere in uh, maybe MPC background that might require something like that. I don't think that's a kind of term that people would kind of throw out there loosely. I got a sneaking suspicion there's there's some rationality behind that. Okay. All right. I could be wrong about that, but that's just my guess. Well, the 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 comment about the parrot and the chicken, the, the difference is that the parrot lives in the house. So if you want an emotional support chicken, have it live in a house. <laughs> yeah, I think we can. I think we can take the question back to Tom to see if that's some <laughs> sort of special legal designation that allows us to to pursue this as other than farm animals. Um, other questions, comments, Justine? Do you have others? Yeah, I do. Uh, there's no mention of where in the yard that that chicken coop or those chicken runs or chickens can be kept. So. Because there's no designation front side or rear lot, can they build a chicken coop in the front of the house, in the front yard, as opposed to the backyard, if they wanted to? It's a good question. Well, I think according to what's written, it would just have to be 25 feet from the neighbors. Right. But so, so that allows it to be in the front yard then? Well, if it met the setback for the zoning, do you want your setback? Is... So explain to me why. I mean, okay, maybe we can have this off, off of the, from the evening. But I certainly wouldn't want to see a chicken coop in anybody's front yard. So. Well, I wouldn't want to see them in the backyard either. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think it's a fair point, Justine. I think I was I was reading this probably like everybody else, just assuming that that's where these things would end up. And I actually am questioning the 25 feet from a doorway under right. 3B. I'm wondering if, if uh, I don't, similar question, right? Do we want to have some sort of property line limitations as well? So I can put that right up against my neighbor's fence. Right. Um, well, I think that's clear. I, I think it was 25 feet. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'd be I'd be open to considering something that says, look, you got to have X square footage and it's got to be X number of feet from your from your neighbor's property line. Right. I agree. Shorthand of saying keep it in the middle of your backyard somewhere. <laughs> but I don't know. Is it overly restrictive? I think the 25 feet from the from the opening or window could leave a whole bunch of sticky situations for neighbors potentially. So the notion I like your idea of a minimum square footage um, yeah. right. available, and I think I'd go so far as to identify it as property not occupied by other structures because you know I have some significant concerns about 
you know, dung, uh, you know, and pest problems, uh, you know, you get to, and you know, I'm reading this thing and it says only on properties with one or two dwelling units. And I'm wondering why, what's the rationale of two dwelling units? I didn't, I don't understand that. I, I had the same question Larry. I actually struck duplexes. I think that again, if we're looking at potential quagmires that we get into duplexes with shared yards, I, yeah, I don't think it's that simple. I, I, I'm okay saying single family dwelling. Yeah, and again, assuming we move forward on this, so I questioned that. Now, the next pair, or C, I guess it is, not to take Justine's theme here, but four per property, what's the magic of that? Where's that number four come from? Four hands per property. From the other uh, regulations that I've read throughout like Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania, it's typically three or four hands. Why not one? In a minimum space. Some people divide or define how many square footage you need for one chicken, not to exceed four chickens. So. I suspect, Larry, the why not one is for people who are keeping eggs. They probably want more than one per day. Yeah, I don't know anything about chickens. They only do one per chicken per day. I don't know. <laughs> that's a good question. I think, I think, generally speaking, that's the, the magic of it. So I guess I'd like, you know, how do we take the temperature of the Planning Commission here? Is it something that we're, and it's not a loaded question, are we seriously continuing to consider um, with, you know, these comments and whatever other ones might be outstanding still. Uh, it, are we wanting to cycle this back through and iterate it a bit more? I, that's the way I feel. Yep. Okay. Personally, I'm, you know, the more I think about this, uh, the less I can support it. Uh, I'm not sure it's worth spending a lot more money trying to fine tune this unless there's some significant support uh, on Planning Commission and the borough to adopt it. Mike, what are your thoughts? Where are you at? Um, you know, as far as chickens, I mean, it's it sounds like a great idea, you know, from the 30,000 feet, but, you know, like Larry says, you know, when, when you start getting into it and, you know, it opens up a can of worms that, um, that could just, I think you might see a lot of problems going on you know, with trying to control and regulate it. Um, I don't know. It just, it, it, it seems like it might be more, more hassle than it's worth. I think at the end of the day, that's the way it's going to end up if we move forward with it and allow it. And believe me, I'm a, I'm a big, I, I, I've been trying to think that chickens are a good thing for a long time. Joe, just a question for you as we kind of figure out whether it's worth pursuing or not. What are thoughts about what's the approach to going after people who already have chickens and have dismissed the existing ordinances? Are they grandfathered in or does that set us up to start chasing people down and trying to back them into a annual fee? And No, they're not permitted. I, I think right now enforcement's just been put on pause due to the ordinance. And if this doesn't go through, they'll be regulated to get rid of it or just enforced to get rid of them. I think over the years it's been it hasn't been an issue with if somebody had it nobody complained their neighbors never complained and it just wasn't an issue, you know. So how, how many of these do we actually have in the borough right now? Do we have any idea how many people are keeping them? There isn't many. There's a handful. And I'm aware of, the, of one. I don't know of any others. Yeah, uh, there there was one that I two up uh, on on my side of town that there was an issue there that kind of brought this to a, a head. Yeah, I'm aware of three at least, and one might be a duck as opposed to a chicken, but <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> there are others. I, I think um, the more I think about it, too, I kind of cool to the idea, specifically because of some of the rodent issues that we had in, in my area over last right. winter. Um, certainly this comes with that. Uh, so I, I, you know, I was initially very optimistic and thinking it was something we should pursue. I think I've, I've cooled a little bit. So to Larry's point, you know, money for continual consultation on behalf of the solicitor. Um, 
I'm not quite sure. Joe, help me here with what's the right motion to ask for. Is it just to table this or how do we move forward? It feels like it doesn't quite have the shoulder behind it though to progress it. Maybe, maybe it's just a vote. Do you support it or not? And I think that would decide if we're going to go forward or not with it. Okay. All right, cool. So, uh, Dick, I certainly want to get your thoughts here too, but I suspect we all kind of know where you're leaning. So let's just, let's just call a vote and see yay or nay. Dick, we'll start with you. Nay. Okay, Larry. No, no. Justine. Nay as written. Mike. Nay. Yeah, I think I'm there too. So by my count, certainly the nays have it. I think we table this for right now as not being further pursued. Okay, any other questions, further discussion on that topic? No. All right, pedestrian safety. We saw the report submitted by the police department, the police chief, I think it was um, just a lot of detail in the last, well, I forget the time parameter there, but the last several years worth of pedestrian car incidents. I'm not sure there's action to be taken here um, or if there's any update on the grant request related to the Active Allegheny item, Joe. I think it's just, just this is just an update. The Active Allegheny grant was submitted uh, that plan would do an active transportation plan that would take into effect pretty much everything this, this issue has been discussing over the past year. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that was newsworthy, uh, a representative from PennDOT came to the office today um, to talk about the letter we sent to them asking them to do a pedestrian safety plan for the state roads within the borough. Uh, they weren't open to doing a pedestrian safety plan, but they came back and said, if you prioritize the areas on state roads within the borough that you have pedestrian concerns for, they can do what they call a safety review. And it's basically the same thing we were talking about, signage, crosswalks, uh, that kind of stuff. But they weren't going to go car launch every, all the state roads in the borough. They said, prioritize it and come back to us with a prioritized list and, and we could do something. Okay. They were going to send me a letter probably within the next two weeks that recaps that and I'll share it with the commission. I think maybe we can find out where our priorities are in a future meeting or through this planning effort to, to bring PennDOT to the table. But uh, good. it was a very good meeting. Good. good. Joe, and I, I do think, think oh, good. Go Sorry, I think that if you look at the chief's listing, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Look at this last page. Give me one second to flip it here. Eight of these incidents are on the state highway. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that does the prioritization we need. And just to be clear, I'm not, well, I don't know that we are asking them to do a pedestrian safety evaluation of the entire borough, but certainly the state highways within the borough. Are they saying they don't want to do that or am I misunderstanding something? No, Larry, you're right. They don't want to do every state highway within the borough. They wanted to do just certain segments of state highways within the borough. He said he doesn't have the resources or the, or the manpower or the money to do every roadway, the full limits in the borough. He said, come back with prioritized segments. Well, here you are. Give them all these. And that pretty much covers all the many. Anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Pretty Even much. at a short list, I mean, towards the end of his summary, I think it's Washington and Station and Washington and Presley are certainly looking like one and two. Mm -hmm. But I, I, yeah, I think this report is a step down that path for sure, being able to get back to them with here's the hot spots that we'd like to pay attention to first. Yeah. I'm going to confess my ignorance here. Where is Washington at bank? What does that mean? That's Berg's Bank Street Extension. Oh, yeah. okay. Ba okay. Uh -oh. All right. Got it. Okay. Okay, well, so every just about every intersection on Washington Avenue. It really is, is yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think you ought to share that with him and say this is our point of beginning. I did. I, I gave him today this uh, this list of pedestrian accidents, and I gave him the slides that showed the Planning Commission goals. What what brought about that letter? So Excellent. he left me with him. Okay, great. Okay, thank you for so the update. Then. To, sorry, do you have to submit a? The formal request, Joe? Yes, but he's going to get me a letter. So basically, we're going to go back and forth for a couple of weeks. 
Good. But I mean, there will be a formal request from the borough to have yes. this study. Good. And, and he was open to it. I just don't think, I think it was just intimidating to him when it was every street in town, you know, or every <laughs> state street in town. So, well, but, you know, they own a lot of important roads in this borough and they, you know, they are responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly we aren't. The output of that, Joe, so the, the grant will cover what? Their assessment and findings and we've got to put in money to actually take mitigation steps or is that part of the grant? No, it's, it's just planning. Okay. So it would be multi-steps, you know, we do get a grant, do the plan. The plan says we do ABC. Some of that could be low hanging fruits we do in house and other ones that we do big picture and we apply for grants for that. Okay. Okay, any other questions or discussion on the active Allegheny grant update? No. Okay, comprehensive plan update. Again, Joe included all those details as part of the package. Um, keep me honest here, Joe. I know I looked at it earlier, but has that gone out yet? Yes, uh, the RFP has been sent out to the list of uh, planning consultants that the state planner uh, says does work in the area. I, I've heard back, heard back from two of them so far with just some questions. So an addendum will be going out just so that everyone's on the same page. Uh, the RFPs aren't due back till February. Yep. So we've got time. I just, I, I'm curious if you've got a conceptual idea of how we'll do the evaluation and scoring of those things. Is that a standard approach that we've used in the borough before? Or is it something that we'll figure out unique to this effort? Um, I, going back to what the, the state planner suggested, just so that we can get some grant money. He suggested that when these RFPs come back, the one that, well, let's just say, I wouldn't get too far into the selection process. The one that we like the most, we use that as our budget request for the grant, apply for the grant off of that RFP, and then and then we could hire, you know, in the summertime if the grant's awarded. So uh, I, I don't want to get too far into it just in case if the grant doesn't come through. Sure, yeah. So, so that, that's really where that is. Okay. And then if, if it doesn't come through, uh, the budget for next year does have, $25,000 in it so that we could phase this in over a couple of years. Okay. And would you expect as a normal course of business that those, those responses would come back already including, uh, including references, Joe, or if an addendum is going out, is that something we can specifically ask for? I would love the opportunity to just talk to somebody for 20 minutes, a half hour who just worked with firm A, B, or C. Um, I can make sure it's uh, just reiterated in the addendum. Okay. So that, I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the commission on the uh, comprehensive plan RFP? No. Okay. No. I, I think the only thing maybe I could touch on this is that uh, in the RFP, we called on having like a, uh, a pre-proposal meeting with all the interested firms. Uh, it doesn't make sense to do that in person now. So maybe when the agenda goes out, we'll have that as a zoom meeting and uh We'll set, include you guys all in the, in the meeting invite. So if you want to attend that, you're more than welcome. Perfect. It works for me. It works for me too. Okay, any other old business out there that wasn't covered on the agenda? No. Okay, hearing nothing, I'll ask if there's any uh, public comment out there, Joe, that you're aware of. Um, or I just I, open it up to, to callers. Sorry, go ahead. It, it's out there. I had one uh, packet that I forwarded you guys today from Bob Fryer. That, that was it. Okay. Anybody else yeah. on the line calling in? With yeah, Nick here. Have a question. It, yeah, go ahead. Is that Nick? Yes. Yep, go ahead. Um, Forgive my ignorance. So was the chicken ordinance tabled or dismissed? Yeah, it's a fair question. I guess I'll ask for the distinction between the two. I think it was dismissed at this point, not having votes to pursue it further. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the clarification. Sure. I have, a, I have a question then. Yep. You know, so we dismissed it, you know, we're not recommending it. But if you know, if there's members of council that really want chickens and they, you know, they can they look at this, I mean, obviously Tom took the time to write up a proposal. Can they say, you know what, we're gonna go around us and we're gonna go with uh, Tom's proposal or uh, um, 
what should I call it? Uh, his proposal here. Yeah, I don't. I guess what makes sense, Mike, I think I, I like the idea of just instead of saying that it came off the table and never made it out of the planning commission, maybe we put it forward to um, council and say our recommendation is not to consider it further. Yeah. Here's a couple of the reasons. Yeah, I'm just wanting it's I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, council goes and takes and say, you know, we're going to go against what the planning commission recommended. I'm just curious if they could do that. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming they could if they wanted to. Yeah, it's a great question, Joe. Just by notes of, I mean, decisions that get made here, do they, not even decisions, recommendations. <clears throat> I know we've got a couple of commission members on the call, so certainly folks are in the know, but I like that approach to resolution of saying, here's what we've decided. You've got the opportunity to trump it, certainly, instead of just pretending like it didn't happen. But uh, I'll look for like, what's the appropriate way to make decisions that were made here this is merely a, a recommendation, so I, I'm pretty sure that they could uh, move ahead with it, contrary to the recommendation of Planning Commission. Okay. Does that recommendation, though, get put in front of them somehow formally? Yes. Okay. Uh, what, what, what I'll end up doing is uh, I'll have a letter from the Planning Commission to the Borough Council that uh, the chairman can sign off on that basically says... Uh, yeah, the planning commission's recommendation is not to proceed with it. And I'll outline the points that were earlier mentioned in this meeting. Okay, perfect. And, and that, I, I can that, share that draft with you before we send it over. Yeah, be great. Because I, I think it's fair that we offer what it, why it is that as it's written, we are not comfortable with it. And that's why the noise occurred. So. I think that's a big issue to point across though, though, is is your issue not to have chickens or is your issue with the way that that ordinance was written? Because I'm not getting that, that feel from the right. I agree. Commission. Yeah, I think at least three of the three of the nays were even in the best of circumstances were probably not right. supportive. Correct. Not to undersell Justine and appreciate that you, you know, put the caveat on it that as it's drafted. So I think we can represent that as part of the recommendation. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure there's uh, too many of the nays that would switch based on different language. I don't want to speak for anybody else who voted nay. I'll, I'll speak for myself. Okay. Well, I, I would agree with that, that I'm just not, I don't think it's a good idea, period. I mean, it just brings too many other potential issues along with it that, you know, the so-called unintended consequences. So uh, I would be a no, period. Okay. Okay. Mike, you're good on that question that it'll formally get put forward as a recommendation. Okay. Yep. Okay, excellent. Any other public comment out there? Uh, yes. Okay, Pat. I just wanted to express my uh, my disappointment with the planning commission uh, regarding the channel ordinance. Um, I found it interesting that, uh, that you looked at it, but you really, you couldn't find something restrictive enough to make it comfortable for you. For which issue, Pat? You broke up. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I was I was speaking about the uh, the chicken ordinance. Yeah. Okay. And I was saying, you know, when this was originally presented to the planning commission, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yep. When it was originally presented to the planning commission, the issue was we want to do it because. Just like dogs and cats and other animals, these do not have impact on the community. Their chickens are in the community as we speak, and you've got an issue with your zoning law. So council presented it to the planning commission. The planning commission went back and forth, and they, they can't seem to now. Not only can't they seem to figure out what regulations should be put on it they're finding so many issues that it shouldn't happen at all. Yet I point out in our community, it's happening, but mm, there's no issues. So, you know, this is a, this appears to be a fear of the unknown. And you know, I would hope that, uh, I, I wish I had had the chance to, to say something before you got all the way to the end of the meeting, but uh, those are my comments. 
So thank you. I, let me respond to that, Tim. Due respect, Pat, I think you completely misinterpreted our discussion a couple of months ago. Frankly, we were caught cold by that whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, my recollection is uh, that we made a little bit of light of it, of it at the time. Maybe we should not have done that. Uh, we now have the regulation <clears throat> in front of us. We've had two months to think about it. And personally, uh, characterize it how you will. I think it's a bad idea. Hmm. It's, I, I understand why you, you know, your, your position that it's a bad idea, but others in the community are you know have chickens. Others in the in the uh, in the surrounding areas have chickens without causing any issue to their neighbors. Uh, and that's, that's why I'm saying that. I don't know that I know that, and I don't know what facts are there are to support that. And, and that's what I would ask. That's what I would hope the planning commission would have done would have been to, to take a look at chickens and the way they're kept. I don't know either. I don't have any chickens. Well, here, let me, what I looked at and what I've been reading for the last two months is that there are rules and regulations in cities or in towns like Mount Lebanon that have chickens. They have, they're very specific rules and regulations on how things happen and how they're taken care of and where their poop is in the yard and they can go pages and we have a three page document that outlines exactly what what family pets should be and which they should be allowed to do in their yard and to me with our problems that we have with infestation of rodents, we, I think we have a problem that needs to be controlled by how their feed is taken care of, how their uh, uh, compost is taken care of and that sort of thing. So that's why I said nay with the way that the law is written or how it's written because there is possibilities but not with what we have so i would i would concur justine maybe what you've got again i don't have it in front of me i you know i've heard from people that the rodent issue is is not really an issue oh but i don't know that i do personally i okay. do and yeah, i also I had somebody tell me when they killed 16 rats on a certain street in Bridgeville, why are we talking about chickens? Damn good yeah. question. No, I, can, uh, I don't disagree about the rodent problem we have in our community. We have a rodent problem. That's not a question. We have a rat problem in a number of areas of our community. Again, not, not questioning that. I am questioning whether the chickens create a rodent problem. Any more did you than read this ordinance? Did you read what it said about composting? I, no, I I haven't seen anything, Larry. Okay, all right, that answers I, the question. You know, all I'm saying is you know, there are there are chickens. There are chickens in the surrounding communities. It doesn't seem to be as much of a problem as we're creating the ordinance that we're looking at. I They're don't know that you know that, and I really don't know that, you know, unless we had the facts that we should be saying those kinds of things. Yeah, and I'll tell you, so, Pat, I appreciate the thoughts. I, I do take exception to the idea that this was somehow some flippant decision that we haven't thought about. Justine mentioned reading things for the last two months. I put a lot of thought in it. Originally, being a champion of, hey, every red-blooded American should be able to have chickens if they want to. I think what, what my primary concern would be is we don't have a history of very strong code enforcement in the borough. That's no knock to anybody present or here, but I look at that and consider that of if this becomes something untenable, uh, do we have a realistic expectation of getting that under control very quickly? And I, I personal opinion of one, I don't, I want to see some traction, I think with, with new administrations and new personnel, uh, bolstering those code enforcement efforts before I'm very comfortable saying, yeah, let's, let's try it. So again, not right or wrong, but I do take exceptions to the idea that there wasn't thought put into how we voted. One of the other communities that I was, I looked into actually asked whether or not 
they can do a one year uh, evaluation with limited permits to see how it goes. And that's how what they actually did, um, like I said, with limited permits for, the, for a 12 month period and see what happens. I guess my, my immediate thought would be just seeing if we decide it went badly, how do you take care of those eight, well, 10, 12 people? Right, well, do they sign up recognizing that or no? Yeah, it could, could be you make it a no one at the front side. I don't know, I let, I'll ask this in light of the last couple of minutes worth of conversation. Is there anybody who voted earlier that would like to consider changing their vote? Speak now. Okay. Any other public discussion? Oh, I got a question, quick question. Uh, not question, a uh, uh, comment. Uh, um, Safet recently had a, in their meeting, they, were they applied for some grants for trails, and I'm gonna go on the trail thing again, um, to connect uh, Fairview Park down to their new, that new community where Mayview is. Um, you know, as, as you, as Joe, you probably know when you apply for grants, when you have multiple municipal grants, you all, it's a lot easier to, to get grant money. I don't know if there's anything we can talk to South Bay to see if we could work together um, on some sort of grant program for trails. Uh, but I know we've always talked about trying to connect uh, Trotters Park uh, to Bridgeville, and if you can connect Treacherous Park to Bridgeville, you can connect it to Newberry, and then <clears throat> all the way out to Mayview. So if they're looking to, to do something like that, and we're looking to do something like that. Maybe we can work together. So just a quick question, quick quick comment. Excuse me, can anyone hear my comment? Yeah, let me Hello. finish that. Let me finish that previous conversation though. Um, so the request was okay, for. Fine. Uh, no, but fine. No, I apologize. I wasn't sure I could do her good. That's all right. We got you, Bob. Um, Joe, just to close the loop, it sounded <laughs> like you said, yep, no problem. You can reach out and connect with South Fayette and see what discussion there might be to be had. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Hi, guys. I'll keep it short. The Steelers are winning by one touchdown. <laughs> at any rate, uh, Not anymore. at any rate, <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, my. At any rate, uh, I, I, Joe was nice enough to fax you guys some stuff about the recommendations made by an engineer, uh, I guess, the last tweeting. At any rate, uh, just very briefly, you guys can read more about it with, with stuff that Joe sent you that I wrote. Uh, the uh, Bower Hill Road bridge does not have to be replaced. It is not an obstruction to the traffic traffic to the flooding changing the angle of the bridge uh for whatever reason i don't know uh, could be accomplished with an increased radiuses uh, second of all the bower hill road or the baldwin street bridge likewise does not have to be eliminated and made into a uh, dead end street that area is of uh, incalculable uh, value to bridge in terms of being economically redeveloped into a, a probably a better major district, uh, a business district than the main district. And, the, and then the primary thing that seems to be ignored is the uh, 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 Bower Hill Road Bridge has a, uh, let's say, a, a square foot open area of about 350 square feet. The railroad bridge just uh, beyond it is about 400 square feet. But beyond that is the culvert, once again, with 200 square feet of flow area, which is um, the major single obstruction to the flow of the creek. And I might mention this. Uh, the people from the D.C. Uh, supply company and, and, and Mike, Mike's uh, father's shop and uh, the v Valentino uh, homes all have verified as recently as uh, two of them it was last week that when the flooding first uh, uh, came to their properties, it didn't come out of the creek bed of the McLaughlin Run Road Creek. It came out 
of the high pressure spraying of the tiny culvert uh, spraying the building out of the Carroll Street toward the borough building and rushing down, rushing north into their properties. So I really would like there's there's some miscalculations going on here that uh, need to be looked into. And one one final thing in terms of the uh, there's a photograph uh, that I Jeff asked you uh, that's not very good of the Baldwin Street Bridge because but God it looks like there's four feet high of debris and pebbles there that's obstructing it. And I might mention in terms of another opinion from the fellow that owns um, Bruce's auto body, which is right, uh, right after the Baldwin street bridge. He said the water didn't, the water again, it wasn't obstructed by the bridge. It primarily came over the wall right after the bridge between the Creek bed and his <clears throat> body shop which means uh, I, I think number one, the first thing we should do to address the flooding is dredge everything, dredge the Chartier's Crick original route, dredge all, all, all of the uh, uh, McLaughlin run road route that we can do. And um, one, I'm sorry, one final thing. Uh, at the last meeting, I believe it was, Larry, that suggested looking into that 20 acres of land in Upper St. Clair Township, about 900 yards uh, east of Bridgeville. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the people there want $2 million or something like that for that piece of property. And that would be a great project to get the uh, the federal government and the Army Corps of Engineers to turn into a 20-acre, 10, 20 foot deep lake that would protect Bridgeville probably permanently. The uh, lowering of the uh, softball field in the park, uh, six feet or whatever it is, I don't think it's going to help much uh, because the creek flows 400 cubic feet of water a second, and it'll probably take 20 minutes for it to fill that area up. However, the debris. Uh, screening or whatever it is that you're putting in there, that should help a lot because that's the stuff that always got caught on the uh, uh, Bower Hill Road Bridge. And finally, there's a drawing in there that shows uh, the importance of the leaving the Bower Hill Roads on the angle that it is, using that to split the Bower Hill Road consumer motors traffic onto Baldwin Street and, and send uh, 8,000 uh, 8, or 7,000 new consumer motors a day down past the Baldwin Street uh, businesses. But take a look at that. It, it creates four new ways to get to the Baldwin Street area. And uh, I, I think that you could turn uh, the, 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 the entire uh, district into a, a major economic advantage yeah but we got the uh we got the package earlier this afternoon so probably everybody hasn't had a chance to look at it and review it but we certainly will no the no that's fine yeah man thanks very much joe but i was going to say i i think uh, yeah, one final comment the the agencies that for decades or a hundred years who give out federal state and county grants and funds including PennDOT, have one top priority. They'll invest in projects that will in turn eventually create federal, state, and county tax revenues for them. And the people that run those projects, if you give them a spectacular multi-community plan that Bridgeville people could design and promote, that would make even the administrators of those funding agencies look like they created a semi miracle that makes them look good. That gives them more money. But when you look at all of these things, the flooding, the economic development, the transportation comprehensive, the transportation part of the comprehensive plan, try to look at it in terms of um, uh, a multi community benefits. And I think when you guys interviewed me, a couple of months ago, I think the last comment I said was Bridgeville can become one of the wealthiest communities in southwestern Pennsylvania where 
right next to the bridge exit on I-79. <clears throat> We're right next to the three highest income municipalities in Western Pennsylvania. We should be able to put this together and, and become wealthy for the benefit of the people that live here. Anyway, hey, thanks, Bob. Uh, thank, th- thanks for the time, guys. Okay. See ya. All right. Appreciate it, Bye. Bob. Okay. Final call for public comment. If none, I'd take a motion to adjourn for the evening. So moved. Okay, Larry. So no, moved. Second. second, pick your take take your pick there, Joe. It was either Dick or Mike. Okay. We are adjourned for the night. Thank you everybody for your attendance and participation. Take care, guys. Thanks. Okay. See you. Yeah.